We are back for the Fusion Digital Summer 2021 edition uh, with Anchor Energy of Checked for our fireside chat. Um, so yeah, um, for everybody who's checking in uh, now, um, Anchor, who are you? What are you doing here? Uh, that's a very good use of the pun that we're going for uh, with the new name that we have called Checked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is very close to ID checking and, and, and mm -hmm. double checking things, so it's it's there. Uh, so yeah, no, very excited to be here. I'm CTO and co-founder at Checked. We are a, a, we are a relatively young startup. Uh, we have got deep roots in the decentralized identity and SSI world. Um, we've been, you know, the team has been working on different aspects of blockchain, cybersecurity, SSI. Um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to build an engine or like a commercial mechanism for checked and trusted data. What I mean by that is having sort of worked in this SSI space for a while, what I noticed and what my co-founder Fraser also noticed is um, there are many, many different scenarios where there's an SSI credential and we can go into this that is generated and if it's issued by a government then that makes sense it's funded for by the taxpayer and it should be free but when you start looking at what is the rationale for most other organizations to give people or individuals a copy back of their data there's a lack of economic incentives to do that because it costs them money to add their own reputation to add their own sort of um, authority stamp to things so for instance take an example of opening up a bank account they add some authority stamp to your uh, to the checks that they carry out. They check your name, they check your address, they check your date of birth. Um, and you could then go present that to someone else as an SSI credential. And, it, and what people have been saying for a while is, hey, wouldn't it be great if everyone had a copy of their data that they controlled and they could very easily go and show to other people? Um, the problem there is, is, it's very hard to convince an organization that has done all of the effort of checking the data which probably has to buy new software to issue SSI credentials. They have to go ahead and probably do some digital transformation internally. They need to figure out how on earth do we accept these SSI credentials in the first place. There's a lot of economic costs associated with that. So that's one part. We are building um, an infrastructure layer, which is based on a Cosmos-based blockchain um, that allows this sort of mechanism of exchange to take place. Then the second aspect of this that I would say that we're trying to solve is we want to make it public permissionless. So a lot of SSI networks are currently public permissioned. And we think a lot of things like governance frameworks and how things are ruled should be done at least by voting on chain and perhaps in the future as DAOs. And the final thing that we're trying to fix is we also want to look at the concept of reputation within SSI. What I mean by that is Currently, when you go through an ID checking service, you have to, it's, it, it, the, the, the checks are often carried out by your bank contracting an ID checking service. So they have a legal framework to fall back on to say, who's providing me this data? What quality is the data? What do I do if they give me bad data and so on? And that kind of mechanism of how do you handle the concept of reputation and liability is, is, is somewhat missing in the SSI space. and and. We really welcome like the a lot of the different companies around the world who are sort of bashing their heads together trying to solve these problems. We are bringing our own sort of angle to this and um, trying to focus on building neutral infrastructure effectively that can be used by any SSI vendor. Great, thanks. Um, I don't know if you uh, brought a few slides for the audience. Or I did. Was, yeah, I well, did. Bring them on. I, I wasn't on. sure if I was allowed to show slides, but of I... course you are. <laughs> yes. Show them. Um, so I'll run through this relatively quick because I've explained a fair bit of this um, now. And so I'm gonna share this tab. Um, and so to walk through the idea behind SSI really quickly, um, I'll take an example of how do you prove trustworthiness online? Right now, the traditional model is- um, Could you put so it in present mode for uh, also yeah. the mobile viewers to uh, yeah. have a better view? Yeah, of course. Um, yes. Can you still see this? Okay, excellent. Great. So right now the mechanism behind this often goes back to show me an artifact, which is a PDF or, or a picture of something either in real life or digitally. Um, and then the receiver of that information has to go off and ask someone to say, are these documents trustworthy? Are they still valid? Um, and part of the problem is um, on, the, on the front hand side, it's easy if you are proving say, 
um, in, in the UK, you can prove your address using uh, a bank account PDF. Those are easily, very easily tamperable. But when you also then go on to the, the cost and the effort behind it, what you start seeing is the ID checks that people go through can sometimes take minutes to weeks, depending on how slow or how responsive the original way of verifying this information is. And it also costs a lot of time and effort and money for the receiver of these ID credentials to be able to go see, are these valid or not? Um, and so what we are trying to look at is the current models of identity are broken. It's quite often centralized around uh, databases that are controlled by one company. Uh, so the example that I often get given is, yes, people can log on using login with Facebook. Now, Facebook has all of your information. But the second thing there is Facebook does not know if I'm really Anka Banerjee or not. Um, and so it doesn't really check that. So the average person has about 130 accounts, and it's, it's, it's not easily in their control. What we are trying to do with SSI and what generally happens in SSI is that the user is in control. And one of the ways that I've heard this described is that the user itself, the user themselves are an API for access to this information. And they're the single source of truth who can choose what parts of this information to reveal as well. And now that's quite powerful. Um, if you imagine right now going into a nightclub, say, and you just have to prove your age, why do, why do they need to understand what my current address is or any other attributes that they don't necessarily need to understand? That's broken in the physical world. And part of what is enabled by SSI is the fact that you can also choose which parts of these information you reveal to someone. And so finally, what we see this as happening is um, checks can be instant. They can take seconds, and they can be privacy preserving, and they can be almost instant, efficient, and trustworthy. Uh, but more fundamentally, what we also want to fix is we want to fix the economic incentives for the issuer. So we want to build not locked credentials necessarily, but mechanisms in which the, or the originators of trustworthy information get compensated for the reputation that they add into these ecosystems. Um, and so what this sort of looks like is we, we are trying to create a clear economic incentive. We are not trying to build software to issue and manage digital credentials. What we are trying to build is we are trying to build an infrastructure layer that can be used by any SSI provider, any digital ID vendor, any company that is looking at dealing with verifiable credentials or SSI or other kinds of digital credentials and creating a mechanism uh, where issuers get paid or, or holders get or holders get paid as well for certain kinds of information. Now, that's it from me on on the slides. Great, thanks. Thanks for the background. Um, yeah, I, um, it would be good to know a bit more about uh, checked check the business and uh, um, and also your your co-founder Fraser. Like, how how did you guys meet? How did you? Why are you doing this? Sure. Where's it coming um, from? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we've worked together for about like six years and often ended up, um, I ended up doing the technical sides of the project and Fraser was involved on the business side, but we also sort of like, you know, complement each other in, in those different roles. Um, and so we went through a process of like, you know, working on uh, blockchain. Uh, we worked within an innovation lab. We worked on some of the very large biometrics and government-based identity schemes around the world. So we've seen this from the traditional ID space. What we've been doing for the past four or five years is having, been, having worked in SSI. Fraser, for instance, was the lead behind the Known Traveler Digital ID project, which is backed by the World Economic Forum. You can look it up, ktdi.org. And it was about how do you make paperless travel happen across different countries? And the governments of Canada and Netherlands were involved in that. Um, but what we kept on seeing in, in a lot of these different SSI use cases uh, is the fact that it got to the point of being getting to a proof concept or a pilot. And then someone would ask the question, great, how do we fund this? Or how do we make money from this? What, how does this actually go beyond the pilot phase when it, it, things get complicated? Um, and fundamentally, what we found is there's, there's a lack of any particular solution out there right now that solves this. And um, that's how that's how Checked was born. We used to be called Verum. You might have seen that briefly on the previous slide, uh, but we've recently rebranded, and that's how we are here. Great, thanks. And um, 
yeah so you have like considerable background in in these kinds of identity related uh, projects um government related you, you mentioned uh, or government uh, and, and proof of concepts etc um now you're in the uh, the fast paced uh, startup world and not just the startup world the uh, crypto startup world metaverse startup world um how has the journey been for for the team and um yeah can you tell us some about your some of your experiences that's a really interesting question um it's often quite challenging within the team because we are straddling two different worlds. We are straddling the crypto world because we are creating a Cosmos network and a Cosmos token um, that will be you know, launched in a couple of months. Um, and that, so the, the way that the uh, community sort of perceives it and behaves and, and, and what they care about is quite different from the identity world, which is often about documents that are issued by banks governments, you know, healthcare providers, and for good reason, like, you know, th these are people taking care of very, very personal information uh, about ourselves. So what we found is, though, that within the team that we have, um, the, the bit that we've had to learn about the most is the crypto world. But at the same time, there have been a lot of SSI projects that have come out from the crypto world that didn't necessarily have the backing or the understanding of digital ID in a government or a large enterprise context. And therefore, uh, some of the solutions that are being built in the space are not necessarily compliant with the technical, legal standards around the world, which governments are adopting for self-sovereign ID. So I think the crypto side of it has obviously been, uh, been, been a massive learning curve. Like, you know, how do you manage a Telegram community? Not something I've had to do before, or not something mm -hmm. the team have, has to do before. But when you start looking at the real utility of it, that's, that's where I think the team's quite differentiated. I think the other big part is, Having moved from corporates to this, and Fraser and I both sort of mentored in, in, in startup accelerators, uh, there's, there's a fantastic amount of work that just needs to be done in running a company. And we are pretty young in, in that sort of like in, a spa in that space. So wearing multiple hats comes right out of the bag. Uh, but interestingly enough, it, you might end up being not, not, not really sort of like focusing on what you think you would be working on which is product, but sometimes you're just like, hey, how do I just sort out access to email for people? So mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that's that's quite an interesting sort of uh, move uh, as well to adjust to. Yeah, great, great to hear that. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to uh, look towards what, uh, wrapping up. Um, you, at a uh, number of points you mentioned, testnet, Cosmos-based yes. testnet. Tell us more, what's the testnet and uh, what are your, your next steps um, beyond that for, for this year and beyond? Sounds perfect. So uh, you're part of that testnet. So uh, you're pa you participated in the ceremony that we did last week. Um, we are, we're creating this testnet that allows app developers as well as crypto enthusiasts to come along and see what we are building in terms of this um, marriage between I digital identity and payments. Um, we are in a beta testing sort of phase right now, and we are planning on open sourcing the code in, in August 2021. And we want to massively expand the number of node operators as well. We're quite lucky to have an initial group of five. Um, where we want to take it from then onwards is we want to rapidly iterate on that and launch uh, mainnet, hopefully around the September uh, 2021 mark, to have some basic functionality on there, which is related to tokens as well as decentralized identity on ledgers, and then to continue iterating from there and add more functionality, uh, addressing some of the things like how do you pay for verifiable credentials, how do you manage reputation on, on SSI networks and so on? And um, longer term vision for ourselves, we see this uh, need for having some form of payments related to digital ID, regardless of what blockchain platform you're on. So ultimately as a company, what we want to, what we want to solve is how do we make this form of mechanism of value exchange happen across every single network? Thanks, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I see um, some of your colleagues have already been posting several pointers yes. in the chat for where people can find more, learn more. So uh, uh, if you're interested, uh, scroll a bit up. Um, for now, thanks. Thanks a lot, Anchor. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been been a pleasure and, and uh, I'm sure it will be a pleasure uh, uh, working with you uh, um, alongside you to uh, make this a reality. So I am super yeah. excited as well and really look forward to any sort of feedback from the community on what we're doing. So thank you. Great. Yeah, thanks. Bye.